Welcome to this tutorial on how to create an Excel platformer game from scratch using VBA and Excel macros. I'll guide you through each step to turn a simple spreadsheet into a fun, interactive platformer game. We'll cover everything from setting up the environment, writing the code, and finally testing the game. First, we'll set up our Excel spreadsheet. Open an Excel workbook and name the first tab Game Tab. Now this is where the game will take shape and the game map will exist. The second tab will be named To Do. This is where we'll keep our to-do list, our running sheet of what to add and build at a later step. Now let's format the Game Tab and set up the game environment. Highlight the cells from C2 to AK36 and let's color them in black for now. What we want to do is make this area square shaped. So we'll set the column width of these cells to be 2.71 or 24 pixels. This is our game map area where all the action will take place. Next, we'll enable the developer tools in Excel to access the VBA editor. Go to File, select Options, and under the Customize ribbon, check the Developer option. Now, click on the Developer drop-down at the top, Visual Basic to open the VBA editor. This is where we'll be writing all our code. The next step is writing a list of every feature we want in the game, effectively how we want the platformer to work. This is where we outline the key game dynamics. So I wanted to create a platformer that relied on using the A and D keys to move left and right, and the W key to jump. I wanted the jump to propel the character five spaces upwards, but still leave the options to move left and right while jumping. I also wanted gravity to push the player character down if they were not standing on a platform. Then I needed to think about victory conditions. What is the goal of the game? Its core mechanic is simple. Collect the gems, unlock the door, escape. Then there needs to be game over conditions. Enemies that stop the player character from playing. This is how the mines and robots were born. These robots need to be able to move on their own, and therefore we also need a time or loop mechanic. Also, we need a clear game mechanic, so that the game can be reset. Lastly, we want everything in the game to be randomly generated, so that each play is unique. The first thing we want to test is the spawn mechanic. Let's get random spawns of each of the key game characters. Click across to your VBA editor, insert a new module, and add in what you can see on screen. There are three different key functions. The first is the spawn elements macro. This is the main macro that spawns the player, the gems, the exit, the mines, and the robots on the board. The colors are set using the inbuilt CGB color settings. The get random empty cell function is a function that selects a random cell within the game board and confirm it is non-black and returns it. Then there's the color index check. This code checks each cell in the range C2 to AK36. If the cell is not black, it clears the color, effectively resetting the cell. The black cells are left untouched. Now that our first function is written, let's add a button into our Excel to test how the macro is performing. This is again using the developer ribbon that we enabled earlier. This is a good opportunity to also save our progress. What we need to ensure is this is saved as a macro-enabled Excel. Our next button and element we want to add is a clear function. Let's go back to the VBA editor, add another module, and build the clear function out together. The clear game map macro is a macro that clears all the cells within the range C2 to AK36, except for those that are black. It ensures that any previously spawned elements are removed while the black obstacles remain. Now let's go and test this. Same as before, using the developer drop-down to add a form control button. Now this is working nicely. However, the game map looks a bit boring. How about we spice it up a bit and add some new platforms wherever we like? Remember, the black doesn't clear with this new macro, so these walls and platforms will carry into the game itself. The next key feature is quite important. It relates to player movement. Let's create a new module and talk through the key features. The first is the declare function get a sync key state. This lets Excel access part of the Windows operating system that reads key presses of the A, D, and W keys, which is not an inbuilt Excel function. Then we have the game loop in the start game and stop game subroutines. This loop continuously checks for key presses and also applies gravity until the game is stopped. The check for key presses function detects when the A, D, or W keys are pressed and then move the player accordingly. Jump propels the player upward by five cells when pressing the W key. The is jumping flag prevents the jump from being initiated multiple times times during the same jump frequency. The can jump function is also important. This function checks if there's a black cell to the left, right, or below the player. If any of these conditions are met, the player can jump. The get running check is also important in that the loop ensures that the player's jumping process also allows for horizontal movement without causing the player to exceed the five cell jump limit. 
the applied gravity function moves the player down by one cell every 0.4 seconds if there is no black cell beneath them. Gravity also only applies when the player is not jumping. Quite a lot there, let's go in and test it. Same as before using the developer drop down to add a form control button. This time, one to start the game function and one to stop the game function. The player's controls and basics seem to be working. The player character moves left, right on command and jumps when I press the W key with gravity then working as well. Next up is enemy movement and spawn. This is the last basic function of the game. There are three pieces that we need to do here. The first is finalizing the spawn mechanic for robots and mines. You will remember from earlier in the code that these elements are subject to information within the Excel spreadsheet. So let's set that up so that AP9 defines the number of mines and AP10 defines the number of robots. We will set these out as a drop down range between zero and five using the data validation function in Excel. The second piece is to update the game loop code to allow for robot movements. This is updating the start game routine to include a tick counter and moves the robots every 0.2 seconds. The third and the meatiest part is to change the code adding a fourth module for the move robots logic. This code ensures that robots will move every 0.2 seconds in a random direction and have no overlap with any black cells. And that's the core of the game code in place. Let's test the basics of the game. I'll press the start game macro and see how things work. A and D are moving the play character correctly. Jump and gravity are working just as they should. Enemies are moving and each spawn, I can control just how many units are being spawned. And that's the basics of the game, great job. We will now need to go away and improve each element to ensure that the victory and game over conditions are being met. In, I've combined all the code into a single macro as I was having issues with triggering the victory conditions. And what I'm gonna do now is go through each piece of the code and explain why it exists. First thing to know is that I have combined the four modules into one consolidated module to help with code processing. The purpose of this first piece is to declare the get key state function from the Windows API, which is used to detect keyboard key presses. The PTR safe is included for compatibility with both 32-bit and 64-bit Excel versions. I've added this function to allow the game to detect real-time keyboard inputs for player movement and actions, as in pressing W to jump, A to move left, and D to move right. The second piece are the global variables. The purpose of these variables is to store the game state, player position, jump state, positions of game elements, and the number of gems collected. This exists so that these variables are globally defined to maintain the state of the game across different subroutines, making it easier to check conditions like collisions, victory, and game over at different times. The third piece of the code important to know is the check for victory or game over subroutine. The purpose of this is to check if the player has reached the exit for victory or collided with a mine or robot for game over. I've added both the check for victory and game over conditions to ensure that we're notifying the player if they successfully complete the game or if they've failed the game. The fourth key element is the spawn element subroutine. There are many aspects of this that we'll go through. In general, this initializes and places all of the game elements randomly on the map. I've added it to ensure that players are spawning in random positions so that each individual game is unique. This again works through for both the player, their gems, and enemy spawns, also being distinct in their colors for those elements. For example, the player is always green, the gems are always gold or yellow, and the enemies red for mines and gray for robots. The fifth key subroutine is the clear game map. The purpose here is to clear the game map and reset all game elements and states. What it effectively does is it remove all colors from the game map except black, cleaning up the game board. And it also resets all of the gem positions and gem counts to their initial state, preparing the game for a new round. The sixth key piece of code is the get random enemy cell function. What this does is it finds a random enemy cell in the game grid that is not black and does not contain another game element. What this does is it ensures that enemy movements are always towards a valid position into a non-occupied space. Then we have the start game subroutine. What this does is it initializes and starts the game. What it also does is handle the game loop for player inputs and robot movements, effectively the time mechanism of this game. I've added this loop so it manages the continuous checking of inputs of the player, robot movements, and also continuously checks for win and lose conditions while the game is running. The eighth important subroutine is the check for key presses subroutine. What this does is it detects and handles player key presses for movement and jumping. This is important to detect specific keys and moves the player accordingly 
accordingly in the right direction. Then we have the jump subroutine, which is obviously very important to handle all of the jumping mechanisms, allowing for the upward movement in the game map. It simulates a jumping action by moving the player upwards over time so that you don't get all five tiles in one tick. We then have the apply gravity subroutine. The purpose here is to apply gravity to the player, moving them down if they're not in a jumping state or not standing above a black tile. It ensures that the player falls naturally unless they're jumping or at the bottom of a game area. Two more subroutines. The second last is the move player subroutine. The purpose is to move the player in the specific direction while ensuring that they do not move over restricted tiles, which tend to be the black or blue tiles. It updates the player's position if the move is valid and visually represents this on the game map. And the last key subroutine to talk through here is the move robot subroutine. This moves the robots randomly within the game area. Why I have added it this way is it creates dynamic and unpredictable movements to increase game difficulty. And that's the game. Congratulations, you've just created your own platformer game in Excel using VBA. We've covered everything from setting up the game environment to writing and testing your own code. Feel free to explore further and play with this game to make it your own. You can add more elements, change your levels, and even add sound effects. The possibilities are really up to your imagination. If you'd rather just download what I've already created, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Next up, I'm trying to make Mario in Excel, and we'll include a tutorial as well.